You're a director of the Hancock Wildlife Foundation, right? Yes, I am. And would you agree with me that what they're doing is they're they are in being innovative, they're setting up cameras, everything that they do is right now is becoming a technical experiment. The Hancock Wildlife Foundation puts webcams in eagles' nests and uh, in order that the pop that people can go on the internet and see eaglets uh, after when they're hatched be mm -hmm. hatched and grow up and fledge so uh, the technicians involved uh, such as Richard Pitt are faced with innumerable difficulties what they w will do is uh, order equipment from third parties and try to plug it together and make it make each of uh, uh, and each box talk to each remote other. Remote locations, they can't go to. They can't go near it once it's up because they'll disturb the eagles. They got ones underwater for salmon. They had ones in the partly windows for uh, herons. Uh. And the Hancock Wildlife Foundation will shortly have cameras on barn owls and beavers and bats. So and here's my possibly question: possibly belugas in some day. So here's my quote. So it was funny. I was at the Tomahawk for lunch today, and all the Beluga guys and all well, 25 pe employees of the Vancouver Aquarium were at the Tomahawk for lunch, which was sort of interesting. They've all come over to North Vancouver for that. But if you've talked about a Canadian-controlled private corporation, and we talked about public corporations and foreign corporations. What about the Hancock Wildlife? Does Hancock Wildlife want to qualify for an SRED based upon all the experiments? Like they've got a hydrogen fuel cell out there. They've got never been done before, right? Um, is this not risky, scientific, technically? Uh, uh, there are two factors. Okay. One of them is that the Hancock Wildlife Foundation is not a Canadian-controlled private corporation. Well, it's a uh, charitable it's, it's organization. A, it's a non-profit yeah. so, uh, society. So it's not going to make so it it's not go it's not going to receive any money through SRNED. Okay, so it has to be a profit Canadian controlled private corporation in order to get cash. Okay, or it has to have a taxable profit as a I get you. Okay. As a non as a uh, as a public company. As a public company. It has or to as have a, a foreign tax or as a foreign country company. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we can wipe that one off. Just well, I said there were two issues. Oh, well, what's the other? One, issue? The one issue is that the Hancock Wildlife Foundation, Foundation doesn't isn't going to get SRNED money because it's a society. The other is that Richard needs the Richard Pitt, the technician involved, needs to understand how to hook the components up and make them talk to one another. Now, when he opens the manuals. It'll tell him that he has to to, uh, to plug it up, plug it together in a certain way, and and if uh, everything works perfectly, well, there's no S there's no technical uncertainty involved, and therefore no SRNED will apply. If it were a CCPC and it engaged Richard Pitt to do this activity, I would instruct Richard to m document all the difficulties he has in making the equipment talk to one another to each, each piece of the equipment, to talk to each other. Now, very often the equipment that comes from suppliers isn't well documented or might have some ambiguities. And when he, uh, Richard Pitt phones the supplier, uh, he'll first be told to read the manual, and then he'll, be, and he'll, press, be, he'll press a little harder and may not be able to get all the support that he would like to have in order to get these gadgets talking, these components talking yes. to one another. Or, or that, in our case, we get told, but we don't put security cameras in eagle nests. <laughs> <laughs> well, so Richard would say, this is what's difficult about putting a, a camera in an eagle's nest. And he would say, I've tried this, I've tried that, I've tested this, and I've experimented with that, and this is why it has been so difficult for us to achieve the ends that we've set for ourselves. So. The SRNED activities start when he has identified a problem, and it stops when he has solved the problem. Or given up on it. Or given up. Okay. And uh, when you've got something set up in the middle of a river, and the river, uh, 
there's all sorts of risk and stuff in this, but that's not the experimental. And that's a physical risk. That's not an experimental risk. Mm, I, I, I don't know that I'd go and make that distinction. The issue really is, has someone tried to do this before and solve the problem? Or are there still some ambiguities and uncertainties around it? And uh, if, the, if it's the latter, well, then probably SRNED okay. applies. Let me use another thing then, because there's going to be, this is going to be on YouTube and on the net, right? And the answers that you're coming up with are for posterity. You recognize this. And if you happen to be, if you got one of my emails, you happen to be watching this, and you want to give us a call, it's area code 866. 9800499. I didn't get anything out early enough to make this logical, so it'll be something that people watch in reruns, as it were, or in archives. But uh, you never know. Somebody might phone. They phone weird times. What if, again, remember how I talked about the proprietorship and the corporation? Well, as I understand it, I'm, I'm picking your brains here, but Richard is a proprietorship doing this work for the wildlife. So is his proprietorship eligible for an SRNED credit for trying all this? Because as you know, Mr. Hancock, and I've known David for years and years and years, and Mr. Hancock uh, the, is always asking for the impossible. <laughs> he is indeed. Well, uh, this is a very uh, provocative and we, interesting question. Is this a good one? Just yeah, this, is a, this, this does have some merit, David. Good for you to point it out. Now, and I, I want to, st uh, to speak first the, uh, at a high level. Under normal circumstances, the company that makes the payments, that, that incurs the expense, is the one that can, uh, is entitled to claim the SRNED money but not both parties, not the contractor as well as the payer. So, if there is in the contract some wording that says that the contractor is entitled to withhold the intellectual property that it develops while supplying a product to its customer, then the contractor is entitled to the SRNED money on the portion of the total contract that is technically risky. So in Richard Pitt's case, a portion of his compensation could be could qualify for SRNED. Now, you would have Richard Pitt would have to make it clear to David Hancock that he's not obliged to tell David how how he accomplishes his magic, that's Richard Pitt's... Sorry, Dave wouldn't understand it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Got gotcha, you, Dave. <laughs> he, 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 he would pretend not to. <laughs> well, it, it, it really uh, ends up being a situation where the contractor must withhold the knowledge about how to apply the technology that he has developed so that Richard Pitt can apply it, uh, uses it again for his next customer. So as long as the, custo uh, the customer doesn't care how uh, the product is produced, then the contractor Could can apply qualify for, for the SRNED. And as a sole proprietor, uh, it, could, it could qualify, it could qual regardless whether it's a CCPC or a or a public proprietor company or, or, a proprietor or a sole proprietor, yes. All right. Well, I'm having fun. Are you having fun with these? Well, I think Richard Pitts just made some money. But he, he'll need a good SRNED consultant to prepare his documentation uh, because presentation really means a lot. I think I said that earlier. And you've really got to understand that the, the reviewers are going to see many of the, all day long. They're going to look at these, people uh, send in these, uh, these technical descriptions of activities that are performed. And as long as they can explain what was difficult about it and why it was, uh, and what they've attempted to learn, then it should qualify for SR and DD. Well, there's nobody who's doing more scientific research in these cameras right now than Richard and Ken Sillis and so on for Hancock, but 
they're the contractors. They're the guys out doing it, mm -hmm. and uh, they're the ones figuring out how to make it happen. And sure. um, it's certainly not Mr. Hancock. You know, David is one of my dearest and deepest and oldest and wonderful friends, but uh, a very demanding individual, and uh, an enjoyable wants, individual, and wants it done. And wishes it was done yesterday. So somebody has to figure out how to do is sometimes almost impossible. He started the whole thing by doing the broadcasting. Well, I think it's, yeah, well, let's give Richard Pitt the credit here. Is he, he was the one who identified this as, as, as a possibility, and, uh, and David Hancock wrote the checks to make it happen. Mm -hmm.